Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Notes in the Sewing Room. My name's Becky. If you are new to my channel, my channel is all about my sewing and dressmaking adventures. So if that's something that does interest you, please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit that like button if you like what you see today. Now today's video is a collaboration and it's also a sew along. So I am working with Sally from The Secret Life of the Seamstress to do a sew along of the brand new Tilly and Buttons pattern, which is the Billy Sweatshirt and dress pattern. So I have decided to do the sweatshirt version but with a slight change. I'm going to change it up into a cardigan. I absolutely love the balloon sleeves and I love the general design but I think for me personally at the moment to fit into my general wardrobe I think a cardigan is probably going to get more work than a jumper. So I'm going to show you how to do that hack and we're also going to be checking in with Sally as well to see how she's getting on with her project. I hope you're having a lovely week, whatever you've been up to so far. I was really excited to see this new pattern by Tilly and the Buttons being released. I, I, I just find it so exciting when she brings out a new pattern. I am a big fan of the ones that she's released before, so I, I'm always pretty confident that I'm going to like you know, what she's bringing out next. So this Billy pattern, I had to wait a while for it to come in the post, and I was kind of an eager beaver just waiting for it to arrive, but now it has, I've had a good look through it, and as I said, I think I'm going to hack this pattern pattern into a cardigan. I think I am also going to make the sweatshirt pattern but at the moment I'm not really wearing my jeans and whatnot. After being pregnant I'm still not quite fitting into my original jeans so I think that a sweatshirt pattern would work better for me at you know a later date but at the moment a cardigan is going to work better because pretty much I'm living in dresses and skirts and whatnot at the moment which is great because I love wearing dresses and skirts but there we are. So in terms of the size that I'm going to make in the uh, in this pattern and I'm sure you're familiar with it. So um, this is the pattern if you haven't seen it already. So there are three different versions that actually come in the pattern pack. So there's version one, which is the regular sleeve top. So that's basically your regular sweatshirt. You've also got version two, which is a sweatshirt with balloon sleeves. And then you've got version three and version four. So they're basically a dress version of the two jumpers that I just mentioned. So in terms of the fabric that would work well for this, you could use a sweatshirt fleece fabric, you could use a ponte, you could use a French terry, anything like that really would work really well. I've decided that I'm gonna use a ponte fabric for my version of this pattern. So I'm gonna show you that in just a while. It is a fabric that I've had in my stash for a while and I can't remember what I originally bought it for, but I thought, do you know what? It's gonna work great for this pattern. So I'm gonna give it a go. But in terms of the sizing that I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna go for the Tilly and the Button size three, which is actually a UK size 10. So in terms of the size that it mentions here, it is a 34 bust, a 28 waist and a 37 hip. But looking on the finished garment measurements, which I always think is really useful to do, the size three ends up being a 38 bust, a 37 waist, and a 40 hip. So I think this pattern, in terms of the sweatshirt, seems to sit just kind of on the hip line. So I think that's probably gonna work quite well for me. So I'm gonna go for the size three, all over, I'm not gonna grade out to any other sizes. Sometimes I do grade out slightly with Tilly patterns, but for this one, I'm gonna go for the straightforward size three and see how we get on. So let me show you the fabric that I'm gonna be using. So I've gone for an animal print fabric, which like I said, I've had for quite a while. And I'm gonna put some footage on the screen so you can see it a little bit closer. It is a ponte, as I said, it's a kind of medium weight fabric. It's got a bit of a drape to it, but um, I'm gonna hold it up to the camera as well so you can see it slightly better. Yeah, it's basically a grey with a kind of black spot printed onto it. So I've got, I think, probably about two and a half metres here. I haven't measured it and I have had it for ages, but I think from memory I've got about two and a half metres, which should be absolutely plenty for making this pattern. Now before I show you how to do the hack and make this into a cardigan, let's check in with Sally and see how she's getting on with her pattern so far and see what version she's gonna make. Hi Becky, hi everyone. It's Sally here from Secret Life of the Seamstress. Thank you so much Becky for joining with me again to make another collaboration video. I'm really excited to be uh, making our garment together today um, and seeing how they both turn out. So for my version of the Billy pattern I'm going to be making the balloon sleeve version 
um, of the pattern and I'm going to be sewing it from this beautiful kind of emerald green scribble print um, fleece back jersey um, which I just think will be super cosy for winter and I can't wait to get this sewed up and have it in my wardrobe. So I'm not going to be doing any exciting hacks or anything with the pattern this time, I'm just going to be sewing the straight balloon sleeve version of the sweatshirt pattern and I'm really hoping that it's going to turn out okay. So I look forward to checking in with you all um, at the end of the video and letting you know how my pattern has gone um, and how I've got on with it. And um, I would love you to pop over to my channel after you've watched Becky's video um, just to see how I got on and see how my garment turned out. So I will see you soon. So in order for me to show you how to do the hack and make this into a card again, I'm first of all gonna cut out my pattern pieces. Now I've cut out my pattern pieces and then going to place those onto my fabric and cut that next. In order to make the front section of my cardigan, rather than using the original pattern piece that comes in the Billy Pattern Pack to make the sweatshirt, I'm going to cut the front section rather than on the fold in two pieces instead. I'm going to create a curved edge on the front, similar to that of the Bertha cardigan from the recent Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book. And rather than using the original sweatshirt neckband, I'm instead going to make a longer neckband that runs all the way from here all the way around the top of the neck and then down to the other side to meet the bottom hem band. In order to create the front section of my Billy cardigan I've decided to retrace the front pattern piece to make a curved edge at the very top so I've literally put my tracing paper over the top of the original pattern piece and then I've created a curved edge at the top as you can see here. So I've actually done that by hand, so literally I've gone from the top shoulder point, which is the one that's closest to where the neckband would be inserted, and then I've drawn a curved line from the shoulder point down to further down on the top where the pattern would have originally been cut on the fold. Here you can see the difference between the original pattern piece and the new front piece that I've cut from tracing paper. So the only difference is on the centre front. So this is the original pattern, so you'll see this is supposed to be cut on the fold, and this is the new pattern, so I've created the curved edge which runs down here. I've delved into my jar of ribbon and bias binding to find a little piece of black ribbon that I can stabilize the shoulder seams with. So I've actually found a a piece of, of ribbon here which I actually cut off a ready to wear cardigan a while ago and then just put it into my little box that I've got in the hope that you know it would come in handy for something so I think this is going to be perfect for stabilizing the shoulder seams on my new top. So before I actually sew that onto um, the back part of the jumper that I'm making or should I say the cardigan I'm actually going to thread up my overlocker so that it's ready to go. I'm hoping that I'm going to make most of this top on my overlocker rather than on my sewing machine although I think I will have to thread up my sewing machine as well so that I can do all the gathering part on there. I'm not very good at gathering on the overlocker. I think you can do it on there but it's not something that I'm familiar with so I think I'll be more comfortable using my sewing machine instead for that. But as you can see I've got both on the table so I'm ready to go when I've got time. Now I've cut out all of my pattern pieces and I have studied the instructions. As always Tillian's instructions are brilliant. It guides you through each step of the making process step by step which is great. I always love the pictures that she's got in here 
to just show you what you need to do and it you know if, if you're someone that takes in pictures more than you take in descriptions like I do then I do find that really useful to actually have diagrams or um, actual photographs of you know what what you actually need to do next in terms of the next stage of the process so I have sewn my shoulder seams together now, which was the first step um, if you are making the jumper version, or in my case, the cardigan. And the next step in terms of Tilly's instructions, it says is to add on the neckband. Now, I'm actually going to skip that step for now, and I'm going to come back to the neckband last because that is basically going to be the finishing part of my cardigan. It's going to run, obviously, all the way down the centre front section. So I think it's probably going to be best for me to add on the hemband first first and then add on the uh, the neck band uh, last so that's what I'm going to do so I'm basically jumping forward in the instructions to the balloon sleeve so it says here thread your machine in a contrast color and set it to a four to five millimeter stitch length so um, I can do that on my sewing machine so I'm going to dive on there next and get that done so it says you need to sew three parallel rows of straight stitches along the sleeve head between the front and back armhole notches. So I'm going to do that. And when you do this, you don't need to back tack at either end. You just need to leave a long piece of thread so you can actually pull up the stitches. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the gathering, basically attach it onto um, the 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 armholes and then I'm going to go back onto my overlocker and stitch it properly on there I think. The other thing that I need to do is sew three rows of gathering stitches for the bottom of each sleeve and they are going to be gathered into this the sleeve cuffs when they're actually added on as well. By the way I absolutely love the fabric that Tilly's used in the instructions here. It is a yellow fabric with little black dots all over it so it's absolutely lovely. I think I'm going to have to have a look online to find myself something like that. If you have seen any anywhere then do give me shout and let me know where to find it also if you have made this jumper or in my case you're going to have a go at the cardigan then um, do leave me a comment below and let me know how you found the making process I'm always interested to know how everyone's kind of changed up a pattern or how you found making it in different types of fabric but for me in this case as I've said I'm using a ponte next time I might have a go at using a cotton jersey or something like that if I was to try and maybe make this as a t-shirt version or something like that so I'm just going to hold up the instruction booklet so you can see the fabric that I just mentioned probably can't see too well in the light today. You'll see throughout this video, I'm actually filming at different times of the day, depending on William's nap time is. So yeah, I'm, it's, it's currently, you know, the afternoon. So unfortunately I've lost the light a little bit for this video. And you'll also notice that I've actually changed my outfit a few times during the course of this video, because not only am I filming at different times of day, I've actually filmed this video over a number of different days as well, as I'm doing different stages of my project. So obviously I don't wear the same clothes every day, so uh, that's why I, I'm changing my outfit. It's not just for the video, honestly. <laughs> right, so onto the sewing machine I go. So in the instructions, Tilly does actually mention using a contrast thread to actually do the gathering stitches. But in my case, I'm gonna go straight for it and use a black thread to match my fabric and just dive in, see what happens, and then I'm gonna go straight onto the overlocker. That basically means I don't have to spend time pulling out all the gathering stitches, so it won't really matter what the inside of my garment looks like if you can see some of those gathering stitches left over afterwards. So now I've gathered up the top of my balloon sleeves and also the sleeve hems, I'm gonna now insert those onto my cardigan. So I've got my cardigan laid out on the table in front of me. So I need to have a look at the notches for the front and back pieces of the arms. And then I'm gonna slot in my sleeves and then I'm gonna get sewing. The great thing about these instructions is it actually tells you to insert the sleeves on the flat rather than actually inserting them when the garment's already been made up so you've actually you're inserting the the sleeve into a round circle in this case it's so much easier just actually putting in the sleeve when you've got the front and back pieces of the bodice laid out flat on the table I just find that an absolute breeze it's, it's so much easier than actually trying to fit something that's quite large into potentially quite a, a small arm socket So now I've gathered up the top of my sleeve, if I just hold that up you'll be able to see it. So I've got to now make that fit into the arm socket. So 
So when you've actually pinned both pieces of the sleeve into the arm sockets, the best thing to do is turn it the right way out before you actually sew it. Have a look at it and try and make sure that the gathering is equal on both sides. I'm just going to hold up my sleeve to the camera so you can see what the gathering looks like at the moment. So you'll see there's quite a lot of gathering there. I think the three rows of stitching actually really helps to try and uh, you know, make that as, as gathered as possible, as silly as it sounds. I think if you do one row of gathering stitches, it's not gonna be quite as effective as if you've actually got that extra, um, those extra pieces of thread to actually pull there to create more gathers. It makes the gathers, I suppose, slightly closer together and just adds for a more dramatic effect. Right, now I've got both sleeves gathered, I'm now going to move on to my overlocker and get those sewn up. So I've had a look at both sleeve heads and I think, cross fingers, they both look around about the same in terms of the amount of gathers that are actually on the top of both sleeves. What I often find is either when I'm gathering it and then I'm sewing it on the sewing machine or when I'm gathering something and then I've sewn it on the overlocker, sometimes there is a little bit of movement. I've had to just learn over the years just to try and just live with that really. I guess at some point I would have kind of unpicked it all and then tried again, but I've kind of come to the conclusion now that life's too short for that kind of thing. And you know, who's actually gonna notice that, you know, some of the gathers are slightly different to another. So as long as they're round about the same, then I'm generally happy with that. But I know that not everyone's the same, but um, that generally works for me. So I'm just gonna move that out of the way and then I'm gonna get onto the overlocker. Of course, if you haven't got an overlocker at home, that really doesn't matter. You can make this entire garment on your sewing machine instead. But if you have got an overlocker, I do think it adds a, you know, a very nice finish on the inside of any kind of jersey garment. <laughs> Right then, so I've now overlocked both of my sleeve heads, which is really exciting. So the garment's really coming together really quickly, to be honest. The, be the best thing about this Billy top is that they're actually not that many pattern pieces. So, you know, if you are short on time, you can do a little bit here and there, and it does come together quite quickly. I am really pleased how the gathering has come together. If you are gonna dive in and use the overlocker like I have, then do make sure you take your time and just make sure because there is all that gathering that you're not catching any other part of you know, your jumper or your cardigan in the overlocker because of course, if you have got the blade down on the overlocker, you are cutting off your seam allowance as you go, which could mean that if you have got something caught underneath that you end up cutting the, the wrong piece that you didn't actually mean to. Although, if, if you are, uh, you know, taking everything through the machine as, it, as it's supposed to go, you know, you're, you're just literally stitching the piece that you want to, then it does, like I said, add a really nice finish. So I'm just gonna hold this up so you can actually see it. So the, um, the two sleeve heads are gathered. I think they're roughly the same on both sides. So it's difficult to actually show you at the moment, but of course when I finished it, I am gonna put it on so I can actually show you a little bit better. But yeah, so that's, that looks really nice. I think it's gonna add a really you know dramatic effect when it's all actually finished. So yeah, thumbs up. So on to the next step of the process. So I think the next step is to actually join the, um, the sleeve kind of all the way down this area. So basically from the cuff all the way down under the arm and then to the bottom of the hem area. And then I think I'll be adding on the hem band after that. So um, I'm not following these instructions exactly step by step because I am kind of doing my own thing as I'm doing a hack here. So I'm just gonna double check. So yeah, so that is what Tilly suggests doing next actually. Um, like I said, kind of sewing from here all the way down to the bottom of the garment. So, and then after that, we're gonna be adding on the cuff. So depending on what kind of uh, billy top you're actually gonna make, there is actually a regular sleeve cuff and there's the balloon sleeve cuff as well. I think the balloon sleeve cuff is slightly deeper and the regular sleeve cuff is slightly uh, narrower. So just bear that in mind when you are cutting out your pattern pieces, just in case, you know, you are making one or the other and you could end up cutting out the wrong one, I guess, if you're not paying attention. So that sounds like something I'd do, to be honest. But in this case, I think I have cut out the right pattern piece and have got the balloon version. Yeah, and then after that, we are gonna be going on to gathering the cuff into um, the cuff piece itself. Um, so yeah, 
yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting all this finished and of course I'm looking forward to wearing it as well. So cross fingers that this hack is going to work out. I am kind of taking my chances a little bit here and um, seeing if it'll work, but you know, I do enjoy a hack project and hopefully if it does work, some of you might decide to have a go as well. Before I sew up my side seams, I've actually pinned them all in place so they're as accurate as they can possibly be. I tend to make sure that I've lined up the underarm seam to make sure that this line here is the same and lining up as the, the back part of the sleeve as well. So I've done that as best that I can. I've checked that you know they, they are as accurate as they can be before I actually get sewing the rest of it. But when I'm actually sewing both of my side seams, let's check in with Sally and see how she's getting on with her project so far. Hi Becky, hi everyone. Just to let you know where I am with my sweatshirt, I've put the neckband in now and I've twin needled all around the edge so I feel like that's the worst bit done in a way. Um, I've just completed the mammoth task of putting in all of my gathering stitches for my sleeves now so the next stage is to get the balloon sleeve effect sewn into the sleeve. So I've just made myself a cup of tea because I feel like that's going to be a bit of a mammoth task um, and then I'm going to get on with creating these big sleeves. So I really hope your project is going well too and I look forward to catching up with you soon. See you soon. Okay, so I finished to overlock down both of the side arm seams and uh, down the body area as well. I've had a bit of a nightmare, I must say, because I've managed to break two needles in my overlocker, which is a bit of a pain, but I've managed to change them and we're all good at the minute. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add on the hem band. And then after that, I'll be moving on to the cuffs and also the neck band, and then we'll be all done. As I'm making a cardigan rather than the jumper version of the billy top, I'm actually going to change the way that I add on the hem band. So in the instructions, it suggests that you should sew both of, you, you basically cut two hem bands on the fold and then you join them at the small edges on each side. I'm actually only going to join one of the edges like this. So I'm just joining the top part here rather than the top and the bottom. If you were making it into a jumper, then basically you'd end up with one circle of material and you'd add that onto the jumper. In this case, I'm just gonna sew the one end and I'm instead gonna join this at the center back of the cardigan instead. And then I'm gonna um, obviously leave the side sections open and then I'm gonna join that onto my neck band. So I'll show you how I'm getting on when I get to the next step. So I've now added the hem band onto the bottom of my cardigan, as you can see here. So I've literally pinned it in place. You will find that the hem band is slightly shorter than the actual cardigan or jumper, so you do just have to stretch that into place. I'm holding mine in place with some pins, and then I'm going to sew that on the sewing machine and uh, then finish it off with the overlocker. If you want to, you could just put this straight through the overlocker, but I seem to be having a bit of a problem today with my overlocker, so I'm gonna do mine on the sewing machine as well. So my overlocker has completely decided to uh, stop working, so I'm now back on my sewing machine. So this is both of the cuffs I'm gonna be sewing on to my cardigan. So, so far I have sewn down the side seam, as you can see, joining the notches as described in the instructions. So the next thing will be to join that onto the, the sleeve. So the next thing will be to make sure that the gathered sleeve hem fits into these cuffs. And then I'll be onto the neckband after that. 
I've now gathered the sleeves and I've added on the cuffs. So all I've got to do next is sew that in place. I've had a bit of a nightmare with my overlocker. As I said earlier in this video, I was planning on making a lot of my project on the overlocker, but unfortunately it's now decided that it's gonna chew up fabric and it's keeps breaking needles for some reason. I think it's something to do with the tension issue. To be honest, I've not had it serviced for absolutely ages, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to take it in for a service tomorrow, hopefully. So, um, cross fingers, I have, I have spoken to the place I take it for services, and they are still taking machines in, even though we're in lockdown at the moment. So, that's good news. I think they've got about a week's turnaround, so I can still get on with all of my Christmas projects that I've got on the horizon. So, that's good, but um, yeah, so back to this project. So, it's really, coming together nicely now so I'm going to hold this up so you can see it so I've got the lovely um, gathered sleeves at the top here which is really nice um, and then like I say I've just added on the cuff so you can see here that I've pinned all the way around and then I'm just going to start to um, sew that in place so there is quite a lot of gathering on this project so you do have to take your time a little bit what with the gathering um, with the top of the sleeve head and then also the gathering around the cuff as well but I think it will be well worth it in the end and I'm going to have a gorgeous cardigan to wear hopefully anyway so yeah cross fingers so when, when I've done the cuffs the next thing and the final thing is going to be to put on the neck band so I am using the neck band or a neckband should I say based on the Bertha cardigan I have cut out the neckband to the same length of that of the Bertha cardigan but it is a little bit of an experiment I just need to do some pinning and then just see if that neckband actually does fit I think cross fingers that it will do because I have done a bit of measuring so far but I, I don't think you, you can get any better than actually putting the two fabrics together and then just making sure that they do actually fit nicely together so I shall let you know know how I get on with that um, as I go along. So to finish off the neckband for my project I have used the pattern piece from the Bertha cardigan for the neckband and as you can see I have started to fold it over here so I'm just about to go to the ironing board but basically I've joined it at the centre back and then I have sewn right sides together the two end sections as described in the Bertha cardigan so if you follow the Bertha cardigan instructions for the neckband this will work nicely for this cardigan I've pinned the neckband now onto my cardigan as you can see here so I've pinned it all the way around you will find that if you do use the Bertha cardigan neckband piece that you do need to stretch it out a little bit to fit onto your cardigan but it really depends on how you shape the front of of your cardigan I of course made mine into a kind of arched shape at the centre front so it really depends on what shaping you actually use but this seems to have worked quite well for me so far. So I've finished it, I can't believe I've finished my cardigan, it is amazing, I love it. So I definitely recommend you trying to hack this project into a cardigan if you can. So this is my finished garment here, so I'm just gonna hold it up to show you. In fact, I'm gonna pop it on, because I think that might be easier. So I'll just slip off this cardigan, and then I can pop on the other one, because that's probably gonna be easier for you to see it. So I love the sleeves, they are amazing and yeah I just really like the overall look at it of it so it almost looks a little bit like a jacket I think rather than a cardigan so yeah it's um it's really nice so as you can see I've got these bubble sleeves which are really nice I've got the nice gathering at the top there and then gathering down to the arm and yeah I think because it's a kind of light to medium weight ponte it's worked really well because it's got structure as well as having a little bit of drape so yeah I'm happy with it overall I'm gonna stand up in a second so you can see it and um, yeah you'll see the kind of length of it so it comes round about to the top of my hip line I would say and the neckband from the Bertha cardigan seems to have worked really well with it I would say as I think I said in one of my earlier clips you do need to just stretch out the neckband a little bit so that it does fit the the cardigan but it really does depend on how 
wide or how narrow you do that initial arch on the front of your 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 cardigan and it just depends on how you're drawing it, if you're doing it freehand or if you're copying it from another pattern perhaps so it just depends on that front shaping as to if your bertha cardigan neckband will fit or not but for me it seems to have worked really well so i'm pleased to say that i have hacked this into you know a really wearable piece i think so i'm just going to stand up so you can see what it actually looks like and you get an idea of the length etc as you can see it's got these lovely sleeves and it's got a bit of movement to it and yeah it's a really nice length as well so I think it's going to go with skirts and dresses obviously it doesn't really go with what I'm wearing today but you know there we go I just wanted to kind of show it to you I hope you've enjoyed watching today's video and seeing me make this lovely cardigan and I hope you have a go at making your own as well. Sorry if you can just hear a little bit of noise in the background, Bentley's just decided he's having a drink. So if you do enjoy, if you did enjoy watching this video, please do hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently and of course those of you who just keep coming back week on week and watching my videos, I really do appreciate it and I can't believe I I've reached more than 3,000 subscribers now so it really means a lot to me and um, you know I really do appreciate you spending the time to to watch what I'm putting together for you. Before we go let's just check in with Sally again to see how she got on with her finished garment. So I'm really pleased to say that my sweatshirt is all finished and done um, and I'm really really happy with it. I'll give you a little sneak peek of these amazing sleeves there's one of them and I absolutely love this fabric it was a dream to work with and um, just like most of Tilly's patterns I've tried I really enjoyed sewing this one up and I can't wait to wear it so I would love you to pop over and watch my video after you've watched Becky's of course um, and see how I found sewing up this pattern in this fabric and I'll talk obviously in a lot more detail about how I'm finding the how I found this make um, Becky, I can't wait to watch your video. I'm really interested to see how your hack version of the pattern, the cardigan version, turned out. Thank you so much for inviting me to collaborate with you again and work with you on this video. I really hope that we can work together on another video soon. So I will see you all soon. Bye! So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this so long. It is new to me doing so long. So if that's something that you are enjoying, please do leave me a comment below and let me know if you'd like to see more of them in the future. But until next time, I shall leave it there and say thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.